Hello friends, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create your very first habitat here in Prehistoric Kingdom. So first of all, what we want to do is put in an animal nursery. So if you go to our park infrastructure here and then scroll down to the bottom and you select an animal nursery. So you can pop that into your park. Make sure that this is within a power source. So we do have some power grids here. So I'm just going to pop that there. If you do want something a little bit more designed, a little bit more fancy, you can pick one of the prefabs. So there is something that looks slightly better. Again, make sure that it is within the radius of your power supply as well. So once you have that popped down, we're going to click on our animal nursery here and we're going to go to open nursery menu. Now you can do this from your taskbar at the side here. So nursery status here and go down to the bottom and that will open up the same menu. So within here, this will show you all of the dinosaurs and mammals that you can put into your park. Now, these have different status depending on which animal that you want to pick. So for example, a Cetacosaurus here, you have three different variations of them, but they actually do have different needs. So you'll see that the first one, which is Truffle, requires 1,000 meters squared. The second one, same 1000 meters squared but you can see the toggle between the different ones the first one here just requires temperate and coastal biome where the second one requires a coastal and desert biome and then our third one here is actually needs more space so it's 1500 meters squared so it's something to keep in mind when you are building a habitat for your dinosaur so Pick whichever one that you want to go for within the list. So I'm going to go for a Dryosaurus here. And again, you can toggle through all the different ones here to make sure that they are all going to be happy with each other. So you can see here, as I'm toggling through, nothing is changing within the menu. So they all required 300 meters squared. The plant biomes, as you can see there, are not changing. The exhibit crowding doesn't change either. And also your fence doesn't change. So that's absolutely perfect. So the two things you have to keep in mind is the minimum size. So it's 300 meters squared and your fence security, so that's one meter. So we've got that in our heads, and basically what we want to do is go down to your, to your enclosures and just basically pick a fence. Now, if you are building and challenge, these do have different price codes depending on which one that you want to pick. So just bear that in mind. I believe the cheapest one is the wood at the bottom. Your most expensive is your metal structure and then your glass and your concrete is kind of in between prices. But anyway, we're going to just go for this one here. This is one meter, which is exactly what we need. And then we are just going to start building. So click and pop down. Now you can go into your settings here. You can toggle angle snap on and off. So here you go, that will now snap it into increment. So that's a 98 degree increment. You can change that down to as little or as much as you want. So again, you can see that's that snapping there at different degrees. So if you wanted to go off to 45 degree angle there, and then we can again pop it out and then it will snap again. So we're just going to build something a little bit funky. Now, if you did want to make this a curved barrier, which is totally fine, you press C on your keyboard, which will give you this really interesting curve and again that will snap depending on your angle snap here but again you can toggle that off if you just want something that moves a little bit more freely so we are making probably an absolute hash of a habitat here but that's what we've got going on so far and then what we do is we select our barrier here and it tells you how much space that you have got so we're going to go here the area is absolutely massive. It is 5,642 meters squared. So that's a little bit too big for our Dryosaurus. But that's no problem. We can either go back into our enclosure here, go and select our fence, and say if we want to actually just cut off this section here. So we're just going to build our fence over. And again, we're going to click into this bit to see if it's enough space. Again, it is a little bit too big. So we're just going to go back in. So we're just going to select our fence again. And again, we're just going to shave this off a little bit more. We're going to see if that's enough space. It is still a little bit more space than what we require. 
but we're just going to go away and delete all this because we don't need it and that is going to be our exhibit size for our dryosaurus. So now we have to go create our dinosaur so if we're going to click into our animal nursery here we can see that these are the dryosaurus that are available so you can select male and female so I'm going to select one male and one female. So my game is currently on pause. So I'm just going to speed this up. And that is the only way that you're going to get these dinosaurs made, so to speak. So once you are happy, we're going to click in both of them by holding shift in onto our keyboard. Or if you go down to the bottom here, it says select all. Then it says release two animals. So we can now pop them into our habitat. Now you can see here, it does come up with a couple of warnings and the first one is food. So if we go into our animal care here and we go into our second tab, which is feeding, we can pop down a habitat feeder. So if we just scroll into this, so we've got our feeder selected, go to edit group, click on your feeder and then you can see here, you can change it between vegetation, fruit, meat, fish and insects. Now the only two that are currently in game at the moment is vegetation and meat. So because we know the Dryosaurus, well doesn't like meat, we'll go for the vegetation there. So they are quite happy with that. Now they will need water. I'm a little bit surprised why the water icon has not popped up, but that is no problem. So we're going to go and click on our Dryosaurus here. And first of all, we can see that their habitat exhibit score is pretty high. They've got enough space. If this was too small, then that would be flagging up there. It's also clean at the moment because none of them have eaten any of the food. And next we're going to look at plant biomes. So our Dryosaurus requires a desert, scrubland or coastal foliage. So if you click on these, Currently, we don't have any desert biomes available. Click on scrubland, it'll come up here at the bottom. It's the same if we click on coastal, that'll change at the bottom. Basically, this is tree brush. So when it's on white like this, you can go away and select all of the trees that are available. Make sure it's on white and you can go away and start painting all of the foliage here. So you can see that as soon as we start painting, this is going to increase here. So we'll just do a little bit more to get that all the way up to the top. Now, if you go over this line, you'll see it will go into the red and that's not what we want. So we want to go to here, which is tree removal and that'll change our little cursor there to red instead of white. And basically, we just want to take away some of the trees to get that back into the green. They're nearly quite happy. It's orange now. Take away a couple of these ones. They're nearly back in the green. Okay, so they're fine. And then they also want some water. So if we go into our water tab here, you can click between the depth of the water. So you can go all the way up to six meters and down to 0 0.5 meters. You can also change the size of your brush there. So I'm just going to do quite a little brush and then basically select your water. So you can go calm water, rough water or muddy water. We'll just go for calm and we're just going to pop that in. And you can see here, again, if you place too much water in, it'll go into the red. And to take out water, just press remove water there. So that takes it out like so. Now I will point out that our Dryosaurus is under the water sleeping. Oh my gosh, that is a mood, mate. Hopefully they're not dead. Uh, you can see here that's a little bit chunky with the water. It's got this like really quite strange 3D look about it. What you do with that is if you just go into your terrain here and you can go to smooth and this kind of just like smooths it over fixed. We'll fix our Dryosaurus which was currently under the water. We're going to go back in and we're going to place our water back down. Hopefully we're not going to drown at this time. And now you can see it's like got this really smooth into the water again. It's, it's not got that kind of weird chunky texture. So that's just something to, to pick up on. But you know what, you could, you could put loads of rocks around it and it's not a, a big issue. So you can see now that our cleanliness is starting to dip down a bit because our Dryosaurus is currently taking the toilet breaks that they so deserve. So there is a way that we will have to clean this up and you will have to go into animal care and then we go into enrichment here and then we go into dung nest. 
So you can pop this down beside any of the poop which is in your habitat and the dung beetles essentially come out, get their little ball, go back in and eventually, after enough time, your poop will start disappearing. I do have a tutorial coming out on the channel which is a little bit more in depth of how this system works so I'll make sure to link that at the end of this video so you can take a look at that. So now, if we go away and click on our Dryosaurus here, you can see that our habitat scoring is at 90% and that'll be because our cleanliness is not fantastic. We can also go to the welfare, so it's at 91. It does need a little bit more food, so it's a little bit hungry, so it'll probably come over, get some food. We can also click on to our barrier here and that will give you a score system as well. So currently we've got 187 as a score rating. Total animal welfare is at 94 but again, that is going to change depending on if there is dung in your habitat. So we'll try and get this up to 100% welfare. So you can see here that now our dung has been removed. So if we click on our barrier, we're at 100% now. So that's totally cleared up our habitat and exactly what we want. So that is essentially how you make a habitat here in Prehistoric Kingdom. It was very easy and very simple. I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with too much information to start you off. But I hope this helps and if it is, then please remember to give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, then let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make them on the channel. So if you'd like to check out how you can clean your habitats, as I mentioned in this video, then click on this video here. But until next time guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.